Good afternoon guys, welcome back to Maverick Baking and welcome back to another recipe video. It is lovely to see you again. I hope you're all staying as well as you can and as safe as you can. Today we are making a gorgeous summery dessert you can make using a very customizable lineup of ingredients. We're making a biramisu. Italia, cosa posso dire, spiacente, pardonami. But today we're about to dismantle the Italian powerhouse of dessert that is the classic tiramisu, and we're about to soak it in beer. Let's make some tiramisu. The first step in making our blasphemous tiramisu is to make the zabaglione. Now you may have heard this pronounced as zabaglioni, Zabaglioni, Zabayon, Sabayon. The internet is full of interesting ways to pronounce it in Italian, in English, and a weird, disgusting blend of the two, which is probably what I'm doing just now. <laughs> but essentially, a Zabaglione is a kind of cooked egg sugar mixture. It's almost like a kind of gently thickened custard that we're then going to fold some cream into, and that's going to be the kind of nice, lovely, sweet, fluffy part of our biramisu. So let's get on to it. So the basis of our zabaglione is going to be eggs, specifically the egg yolks. So what we're going to do is we're going to crack the three egg yolks into a big bowl. We're going to add some sugar to it. We're going to put it over, as you may be able to see, a little kind of double boiler, a little pan of simmering water that doesn't touch the bowl because we don't need any kind of curdling custard disasters. And we're just going to very gently cook the eggs and the sugar together to a certain temperature to ensure that it is both safe to eat and that it is a nice kind of thickened, creamy, luscious, silky, stuff because that's what we like. So let's do it. So what we've done is just add our three egg yolks and our sugar to a bowl. Now normally I would recommend doing this with caster sugar or any other kind of granulated sugar you have. All I have in the flat is icing sugar but considering the fact that icing sugar is essentially just normal sugar that's been blitzed into a pulverized powder, it'll do the job. <laughs> So we have added that to our three egg yolks. Our egg whites are kept separately. You can make these into meringues. You can make them into macarons. What you do with your egg whites is not my business, but enjoy. So what we're going to do with this mixture is we're going to grab our electric whisk and kind of blitz it up for a minute before we put it over the heat to cook very gently. Now, if you like, and you have very strong, nimble, athletic biceps, feel free just to use a regular hand whisk to do this, but I wouldn't recommend it because it causes quite a lot of pain. So with our electric whisk, we're just going to beat this up like that for about a minute until it's just kind of combined. So just to kind of give you an idea of what it's like at this stage, we have just blended our sugar into our egg yolks and we just have a kind of nice pale stuff. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take our little pan, which currently has about one inch of gently, 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 gently simmering water, and we're going to kind of gently, 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 gently <laughs> cook our egg and sugar mixture over the top of that. The more we mix, the more aerated, lovely, and fluffy this will be, and the heat, as I said, will just help to thicken it, to kind of stabilize it, and also to make the eggs completely safe to eat, which they usually are in the UK, but you can never be too careful. So let's do that. So you're going to want to set your bowl and whisk for about five minutes. By that time, it should be up to temperature and you should have a lovely fluffy mixture. So I think we're done. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our little bowl of the heat. So what you will see at this stage is that we have a gorgeous, thickened, white, aerated mixture. So you can see how kind of lovely and thick and pale it's become with the combination of the heat helping to stabilize it and also of course the air in there that's making it so kind of lovely and fluffy looking. So normally with a mixture like this you would add some kind of wine be it marsala or some other kind of sweet wine like that. Instead obviously, because we're making a biramisu, we're just going to add a couple of tablespoons of our beer, along with just a little grating of lemon zest. Not enough to make this a super lemony dessert, but I think the lemon and the beer balance really nicely together because they both have that kind of fresh acidity to them. So we're going to do that, and then we're going to whisk it up with our electric whisk for just one more minute. That will help cool the mixture down a little bit and obviously mix in our ingredients while adding another little extra bit of fluffiness to it. 
So let's go. So as I said, we're not going crazy with the lemon zest. You literally just want to give it kind of a few scrapings with a nice fine grater. We don't want any kind of big cheddar cheese gratings in here, okay? We're then going to open our beer up. Happy Saturday. For this, I am using just a standard kind of 5% IPA, nothing crazy, nothing super fancy. You can use your favorite kind, you can use the cheapest kind, use whatever you like. Use something that has the same kind of either sourness or that kind of nice freshness that an IPA has. Using stout or porter here, or even a sort of heavier kind of lager might not really be the best match with this dessert, but a nice kind of light IPA like this is just what you want. So let's add a couple of tablespoons of this to our mixture. And when I say tablespoons, you don't have to measure. So now we're just going to give our mixture that one little kind of minute to two minute long last whip to help cool it down and get it even fluffier. So the next stage in the process is leaving this to one side for about 10 to 20 minutes just to help it finish cooling down but with also not waiting too long that all the air kind of collapses out of it. In the meantime we're going to have a little bit of a tidy up and we are also going to whip some double cream. Now typically in a tiramisu you will see both cream and mascarpone or just mascarpone. I don't have any mascarpone. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're just going to whip up some cream and we're going to fold it gently into this mixture once it's cooled down a little bit to give us a beautiful white kind of beady lemony cream that we're going to use in our tiramisu. So let's do that. For the cream, I am just using a standard Scottish double cream. Now you can also use whipping cream. I know that in some countries this is known as heavy cream, especially if you are based in the US or if you're based in Canada, it will likely be called heavy cream. Basically the kind you can whip, that's the kind you want to use. I am going to use about 300 milliliters here. We may not need it all, but that's what we're gonna use. So I'm just going to pour it into my jug and I'm going to use the same electric whisk just to whip it until it is thick, but not kind of spreadably stiff. Okay, we are finished whipping the cream. So with the cream lovely and fluffy and aerated and our zavallone nice and kind of cooled down, we're going to now gently fold them together into a luscious white cream. So the ideal tool for this job is a metal spoon. If you use a big spatula, you can knock too much air out. If you use a whisk, you can knock too much air out. When you're folding anything in, a metal spoon has kind of the smallest amount of space that will come into contact and it's also the lightest. So you'll usually find it's the most gentle mechanism for folding. So let's do it. So we are just adding half of our cream into the Zavallone mixture. Give it a good fold, we'll add the other half in and then we're going to build our bit of a soup. So when you're folding a mixture like this, the best method is to kind of take the spoon around the bowl and then cut through, around the bowl, and then cut through. You don't want to beat too hard or it may become very sloppy, but you also want to ensure that you're getting all those chunky bits from the bottom of the bowl and that no man is being left behind. And this rule can apply to cream, it can apply to egg whites, it can apply to anything you have to gently fold something into. So we'll just add in the other half of our cream. So once it is all folded in, you should have just an angelically airy mixture, just full of lots of delicious, sweet, creamy fluffiness. Everything you want from the kind of creamy element of your tiramisu or your biramisu. All we need to do now is assemble them. So obviously for our biramisu, we need a kind of starchy element. Now we get this from sponge fingers. Now depending on where you live, these may be called savayardi, these may be called lady fingers, lady biscuits, sponge biscuits, sponge cookies, whatever they are called. These are essentially just very light, very thin, and very rock solid biscuit things. Typically, you only really ever see them used in trifles, in charlottes, or in tiramisu. Traditionally, in a tiramisu, these would be soaked in a kind of coffee and sugar or a coffee liqueur mixture. But today, for our biramisu, we are going to soak them in beer. So to do so, we are just going to take the beer that we already have open and haven't finished drinking yet, we're going to take just a kind of a dish that's big enough to dip your fingers into. So we're just going to pour out a little amount of it 
If you like, you can add sugar to this. I'm not going to because I don't feel it needs to be much sweeter, but do feel free to stir in a little bit of syrup or a little bit of sugar at this point if you do like your desserts sweeter. You're also going to want to look out your serving dish. Now you could make this into a big kind of serving dish, like a traditional tiramisu, or you can use, as I'm using, little kind of glass tumblers or ramekins, anything. So I believe this mixture should make about four biramisu in these kinds of glasses, but we'll see how we get on. So if you're making a large biramisu, you'll probably want to keep your lady fingers whole, but if you're making kind of smaller ones like me, don't be scared to break them up into whatever shapes and sizes you need to fit into your dishes. I'm going to use them kind of broken in half, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to, with clean hands, just dunk them in this mixture. Now you don't want to leave them for too long, much like dunking a biscuit in your tea, because it will just become a soggy mess that you can't do anything with, but a good generous drenching of that beer, just until you feel it start to soften and give a little bit in your hands. What we're going to do then is we're just going to put it straight into our serving dish. So we want a layer of the kind of soaked sponge fingers at the bottom, then we're just going to lay it up with our lovely creamy mixture until it's full. I cannot wait to eat these, so let's get assembling. As you can see, when you have a layer of those biscuits on the bottom, obviously it doesn't need to be completely neat, but as long as every, as long as every spoonful or mouthful will have each component in it, that's the real goal here. So to that, we're just going to take our spoon of our creamy mixture, and we're just going to put it straight on top. We're just going to gently kind of make make sure everyone gets familiar. Make sure everyone's nice and friendly and cozy. I would say sort of two to three tablespoons at this point of your creamy mixture on top. And then we'll continue to layer up the Savoyardi, the lady fingers, whatever you want to call them on top of that. So we have now layered up our adorable little biramisu. So it looks like a mostly creamy mixture, but you can see little bits of those Savoyardi biscuits poking through. Now, it wouldn't be absolutely ideal to eat these at the moment. The cream is still a little bit too soft and the biscuits a little bit too hard. So we want to refrigerate these for about 30 to 60 minutes at least, ideally, overnight or as long as you can before serving because it will help make it kind of nice and cool for serving and it will also ensure that everything is the right texture so that you have softness and moistness throughout without any kind of weird jarring texture combinations. So we're going to get these in the fridge and I'll be back with you very soon to taste them. Chilled, thickened, softened, biramisu is ready. <laughs> Just to give you guys a close-up of what these little beauties look like when they're finished, here you go. So typically you will see a tiramisu served dusted with cocoa powder because the cocoa and the coffee or the coffee liqueur within the tiramisu pair really well together. So I was kind of humming and haying about putting cocoa powder on top of the biramisu and it just, it just didn't sit right. Even as someone who loves chocolate, to put some kind of rich dark flavour onto this relatively light, summery and fresh tasting dessert didn't really feel right. So just to insult the glorious nation of Italy even more by accident, I love you all, we've dusted it in icing sugar instead. <laughs> just to keep that kind of lovely light colour palette on there so that it looks creamy and enticing without anyone thinking it's just going to be a normal tiramisu when you break into the biramisu. But enough chat, let me show you how it looks and how it tastes. So I have one here obviously, that I have already tasted, one of the slightly uglier ones of the batch. So as you can see, when you stick your spoon into this and you lift up that glorious, glorious biramisu, now I have no idea if this will be focusing properly, you can see the gorgeous softness of that cream. It's still very light, it's still very creamy, it hasn't thickened into anything too much, but you can also see that that gorgeous Savoyardi has softened into more of a cake-like texture instead of the standard sort of horribly crunchy version that it is in its natural state. Let's see how it tastes. It's unusual but it's good. Just to show you kind of the inner workings of this dessert, take a look in there. You can see our creamy mixture has thickened beautifully and it has helped to soften those Savoyardi biscuits. This is so decadent and so kind of special feeling and tasting and yet it's so, so light. 
It's typical that I'm doing this on a day where it's pouring with rain, but this as a summer dessert, after a barbecue, after a nice big kind of summery salad, this is such a nice light dessert that will cool you down, but also fulfill any beer cravings you have as well. Plus, did you see how easy it was to make? Minimal ingredients, all stuff that you should definitely be able to find at the supermarket just now, and customizable. You know, if you wanted to throw some coffee in there, go for it. If you wanted to make this with Guinness instead of an IPA and make a kind of dark coffee chocolatey version, that would probably be absolutely incredible. You could add cream cheese, you could add mascarpone, you could add ricotta. You could play around with this so much. Even adding fresh fruit like raspberries or some blackberries in here would be absolutely delicious. But even just as it is, that combination of the fluffy sponge, the kind of tangy acidity from the beer and the lemon and that gorgeous smooth sweetness from the cream, Honey, I could eat this all day long. If you would like to make the bitter masu, you can find the recipe in the description box below and you will also find it on my blog, Maverick Baking. If you would like to see more recipe videos like these, especially the chaotic quarantine edition that we've been doing a lot of recently, let me know in the comments below. Let me know if there's anything in particular you would like to see. For now, I'm afraid that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you are all staying safe. I hope you're all staying healthy. And I'm so, so grateful as always to have you here. Thank you for watching and I will see you for the next one.